So, thank you so much for coming tonight. Um, you know, for us, this next portion is like the highlight of the night. Uh, we have unbelievable people moderating and on the panel. Um, so we're super excited about this. So tonight, how this will go, we will do 45 minute fireside chat, um, and then we will pass around the mic. So if anybody has um, any questions or concerns, or want to talk about the trash bill in the city, whatever you want to do here. <laughs> whatever, whatever, I'm going to pay for that one. Whatever it is you want to do here, um, you can do. So um, without further ado, I'm super excited to bring up the moderator. Um, if you don't know Shantara, she is a rock star. And I can sit up here and list all the unbelievable things that she's done, like you know, run D for the governor, and be you know, the, the co-founder and COO of one of the hottest startups in the country with Civic Eagle. Uh, I wanna get paid for that one. And, <laughs> and you know, I can talk about all this great stuff, but more than all of that, she's just an unbelievable person. So. I feel super honored that I get the opportunity for her to come in here and do our first panel and be the moderator for our side chat. Thank you. Thank you. I, I would say I'm gonna pay you, but we we don't we don't have any money. <laughs> not it's not allocated. It's not it's not allocated. Am, am I we're am I bringing up my all star panel here? You are. All right. First, I just I do want to just c congratulate. The um, the FC team and, and you for this just amazing milestone. Just give them a round of applause once again. There had to be a lot of blood, sweat, and tears bringing today to fruition. I also believe there is was a lot of vision to build an amazing product, and this team has kept with it. and And you guys should be really, really proud of yourself. And I also just want to take the time to personally thank you, Clarence, for being a vision of possibility. Because that's what you are for all of us, um, especially for Team Civic Eagle, for showing us the journey that we have ahead and just being a partner for us. You know, we are really grateful for you doing that for us. And so I just want to thank you for that. And, and it takes a lot to get to these moments and building something. And when you are putting yourself out there and taking the risks, it really um, is something that you should be committed to for and you, you should be proud of yourself. So thank you for that. Okay. So I feel like we at the Dakota, but I can't sing. <laughs> Um, but I'm honored here, uh, I'm honored to be here to moderate uh, this fireside chat with, with two amazing uh, panelists. I'm going to have them walk up and I'll, I'll introduce them as they, they said, uh, Mayor, Mayor Carter, Mr. Carter, and Pini from True Ventures, please come and have a seat and get comfortable. Okay? Thank you. Thank you both for joining me. Thank you, Rep. Don't ask him what that means. Um, <laughs> they didn't hear you. <laughs> My mic's not on yet. Yeah, good. <laughs> the mayor has a nickname for me. Um, so I am honored to uh, welcome Mayor Carter, who is the 46th mayor of the great city of St. Paul, um, a fourth generation St. Paulite. Fam, you alumni, he say that right. all the time. That's and right. somebody in the audience usually says, what? <laughs> you know something? Yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> you know what it is. Yeah. Well, I, I'm honored to uh, introduce him. We have been longtime colleagues, and I have seen his vision of building community come to life in this role and so many roles. Um, since coming to the city, he has just put a stamp on making sure that all St. Paulites have access to prosperity um, through raising the minimum wage, tripling free programs and rec centers, um, eliminating library fees, and he always talks about that, and it seems so trivial, but it is sometimes food on the table with respect to a library fine, and that's something tremendous. And just launching other programs, such as Financial Empowerment Office, 
and his staple signature sustainable program, which is his college savings account um, program called College Bound St. Paul for young people investing in a savings account when kids are born. And I, I, th I don't know if it's illegal that your baby, will your baby get $50? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> baby. I just wanted, I, you know, okay. Okay. All right. 53. So, <laughs> so welcome, Mayor. Thank you. I am honored to also introduce, I'm, I made it my point to make sure I say his name right because no one ever says my name right. And so, Puni Agarwal. Sounds good. Yes, yes. Yeah. Who is a partner at True Ventures, which is an early stage investment company. Um, he focuses on infrastructure applications in mobile and one of the investors in UPSI. Uh, Puni brings a strong mix of operational and investment experience in this role and he has started his career in a number of places which I believe is important when you think about an investor to have a background in what you are investing in and so worked at Crosswind Software as a product manager and focused on early startup integration at IBM and also spent time at JP Morgan Chase in technology investment banking and also at the Mayfield Fund. His sweet spot is those early stage investors with investment opportunities, which I think is something that is really important when it comes to um, venture capital because who's taking that first risk is the most important thing. So welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank All you right. So why don't we start with you, Mayor Carter. Okay. We've heard you talk about St. Paul being for all. Can you tell us what that means as it relates to startups? Yeah, I appreciate that. And I just, before we continue, I just want to say, just all recognize the Boots Chantier headline. <laughs> <laughs> they match my Upsy shirt. <laughs> Not everybody can rock a snake skin cowboy boots. And I just want to let you know we recognize Thank you, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you recognizing Absolutely. my swag. So I'm born and raised in St. Paul, right? Uh, my family's, I, I'm, I'm fourth generation, raising the fifth generation in St. Paul right now. And it's incredible because I grew up in this incredible, like, wonderful, uh, uh, opportunity-filled city. Uh, and, you know, went to private school and, you know, my father was a police officer and my mother was a professional and now she's on the county board. And, like, grew up, like, in the best of the best in opportunity and surrounded by every opportunity. I also went to public school. I also turned 16 and started getting pulled over by police officers. I also have friends who have been killed. I also, and at the same time, we have this, these, like, two communities playing out right in the same space. In some ways, downtown sometimes, you know, I have people who ultimately what they say is it feels like we have these amazing tall buildings where there's just full of opportunity and prosperity, and we have people who are just always stuck in the shadow of these buildings and this economic activity, right? So when we say we want to build a city that works for all, we're talking about equity, right? And the funny thing about equity is it's almost two different words. Uh, so I went to undergrad in business administration uh, in business school, and then in grad school I went to this Humphrey School in public policy. And in grad school, you know, equity was about social justice and people feeling good and photographs looking diverse and stuff like that, right? But in business school, equity was a fundamentally different concept. In business school, equity was a money word. In business school, equity was about shares of ownership. It was about uh, participation in decision making power. And it was about participation in economic benefits. And I've just come to the conclusion that the two are, are really one and the same. Like, you can't have the social justice component of equity without having that economic component of equity. And so what we did, and I'll tell you, there, there are pundits and you know, political observers in this city who still have no idea how we got elected mayor. <laughs> and the reason is because look, when I'm in national audiences, I always tell folks, St. Paul, whatever your preconceived notions are about St. Paul, they're 100% true like 50 years ago, right? <laughs> because our city is changing so fast. Our city is growing so fast. Our city is diversifying so fast. And our public systems haven't only not all, have, have, only, have not only not always worked for all of our community members in all of our corners of our city, but there are some of us who have seen and felt 
as though those public systems were working against us. So the reason we won is because I spent, uh, we spent a year and a half before election, before we even launched a campaign, just listening deeply to community members, right? To just identify what are the needs, what are the things that are being unmet, what are, like, what are your ambitions? I always ask people, like, why are you planting your business in St. Paul? Like, why are you raising your child in St. Paul? What are your dreams for this thing that you're launching in St. Paul, right? To identify that. Um, I, and and th where I'm going is, like, this is all, I think, I think a very kind of startup -y type of attitude, right? Uh, so we spent that time doing that. Uh, we spent the campaign just talking and knocking on doors and talking to people and burning more shoe leather than anybody else to engage folks. And now we've gotten a chance to spend the last two years r racing as hard as we can to identify, creatively identify all the problems that are unmet, all the needs that are, that are unresolved, that are unaddressed, and figure out ways that we can bring a product to market uh, to address some of those needs, from college savings accounts to uh, eliminating late fees in the libraries. You know, these are things that we hear from our community members, uh, and these are things that our community members believe in so much that they're willing to step forward and be a part of it. I sort of see the city uh, as sort of, in a way, a startup in that way, uh, at least the ethic that we're trying to build, and that's one of the reasons why it's so important that startup, the startup community who, this is what you do, the things I just described is what you do every single day. You hustle, you identify problems that people haven't solved, you know, you identify those types of things, and so, you know, when our, when our innovators of color uh, aren't funded, or when our innovators of color aren't seen, aren't heard, and aren't given the opportunities, we uh, rob ourselves of the opportunity to solve those problems in the way that is required to build a city that works for all of us. That's why I'm here. I'd be like yeah. Clarence, that's what I do. My job. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> I can't afford the mic, so I gotta catch it. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> A lot of what you mentioned is, is about um, being willing to see the unseen and really trying to do all that you can to uh, break down perception because that's really what gets in the way with a lot of this. And, and thinking of, in thinking about that, Penny, many, many um, investors and, and media call Minnesota flyover country, which it baffles me because you know we're feeding the world, we're 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 keeping their hands clean, and we're doing all these things with international companies here. I'm interested in understanding, with all of that, why did you decide to invest here? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I mean, I think if you, uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's such an honor to be here among, with you, with this entire group of people. Um, the, I think the larger way to look at it is we think entrepreneurship is literally everywhere. You know, it's global. And you can build great companies anywhere now. Um, there's great talent, there's loyal talent, there's exceptional talent. So like, even if I think about myself, like I've invested in Missoula, Montana, Minnesota, Michigan, um, literally all over the country. Wisconsin. Oh, only the M states? <laughs> Wisconsin. <laughs> w. It's an upside down. That's right. <laughs> um, Target, Target calls it Minnesota Badger. Uh, <laughs> and and so, yeah. If you step back, we think entrepreneurship's everywhere. Why Minnesota? It, I, I mean, to be totally honest, we didn't target Minnesota, but we found Clarence. I mean, that's that's how we came to Minnesota. So uh, you know, someone introduced me to Clarence. We had a conversation, and I was just talking to you guys a little bit in the back. It's like. One of my partners he says it all the time. It's that you know it when you see it. So when I heard Clarence talk to me, and we spent I don't know about an hour together on the very first call, I was like, I gotta fund this person, you know. And then we subsequently spent you know a couple weeks together and trying to figure it out. But someone with such passion, um, solving such a massive problem. I mean, that was what was so attractive. But what what we've done at True is we've always found interesting, new, unique opportunities. We believe in really maximizing risk. That's what we like to say. We like to maximize risk at the early stages, like you were talking about. At the early stage, we like to swing for the fences. And so we come in super early, and then we use that to actually foster more. So, you know, we invested in Clarence. We want to find more Clarences, or, and we want to find more in Minnesota. I mean, that's why me and two of my colleagues actually came out here, you know, in the cold, 
I mean, it's cold. <laughs> it's crazy cold. This it's is actually warm, warm today. I, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I could have come in June. I look like my snake skin socks here. Like, yeah, February. February kind of scared the hell out of me. But, um, <laughs> but we want to find more of that. And so that's what, that's what initially drew us here. And, and we're going to do more. We will. That's awesome. You know, when you think about um, that early risk, and, and that's something I want to, I just want to touch on that for a moment because that's something in this environment, um, getting many of our investors to, to see that future startup founder when they're early in their career right now and, and willing to take that risk. How, how do you, how do you measure that when they're when in the early stages the product is not perfect and the person is not perfect? How do how do you measure that? I'm interested in that. Um, it's it's probably more art than science to mm -hmm. be honest. I mean, we invest when there's one to ten people when there's usually kind of nothing. You know, sometimes there is more than that. I mean, Clarence had a little bit more of a business than sort of starting from ground zero, but we um, we often look for the why. You know, why is a person doing this? What brought them here? You know, the hustle factor, the care factor, the way they can story tell. It, it's all tells for, you know, how they can hire people or attract their first customers. So a lot of it is, a, is an initial connection and then a view on a market um, that actually, actually usually isn't here yet. It's a market that's coming, typically. So it's telling a story of where that <coughs> is coming from. So we really don't, pull out spreadsheets and measure. We actually don't care what school or anything like that kind of, we, we just want to talk to a person and actually sit down. In fact, a lot of times we don't even have people present with a deck. It's just, just tell me who you are and why you're here. And that is usually where we, we really want to find that spark, that passion, because that, that's what leads to everything else, like how you get your first customers, how you get everything else beyond that. So it's a little, it's a little more art than science. I don't know if I answered your question, but. Yeah, no, that, that's very helpful yeah. because at the end of the day, you are looking for that return, but in order to get that return, you have to be willing to take that risk. And speaking of that, just, this is a question for, for both of you because you both are focusing on high growth investment and you both are looking for that return. And so if, if I can be so bold to say it from a standpoint of, it's investment not only in commerce, but it's also about community. And, and I guess for you, Mayor, it's also concrete. But you, you're, I'm wondering if you can tell me why investing in technology matters for such a time as this? Like, what are the returns that you're looking for as you think about these types of startups? Why does technology matter from a, from a government perspective? Why does technology matter as you think about it from a private sector? And what are those returns that you're looking for? The truth is, I don't see it as investing in technology. I see it as investing in innovators. I see it as investing in people who know how to use uh, the latest cutting edge tools, whatever those tools are, uh, to change the world, right? Uh, I gotta tell you, I was like, like I love what you just said about maximizing the risk, right? Uh, we're, we're a co as you mentioned, it's kind of cold here sometimes. Um, I, I grew up playing hockey, right? And I'm teaching my kids how to ice skate, and I like, teach me how to ice skate, and the only thing I teach them is how to fall and get back up, right? And my thing to them is like, if you know how to fall without hurting, hurting yourself and get back up, you know every single thing you need to know to learn every single thing about ice skating. And when I do something, they're like, oh, how come you can do that and I can't? I'm like, because I've fallen so many more times than you have. And the punchline is, if your goal is to just never fall, right, and you're one of those people who just goes around the wall and clings to the wall, then you can absolutely never skate because you're trying to minimize the risk as opposed to maximizing the risk, right? And so that's actually one of our mantras is we want to take smart risks, right? We don't want to be haphazard, but we want to take smart risks and we want to kind of be able to kind of figure out how to get there. But exactly what uh, Puni just said is, is, is why we need innovators in our community, right? Because like I said, our city is growing so fast. Uh, St. Paul, our population was 280, around 285,000 in our 2010 census, right? We are knocking on the door of 320,000 now. We've added 30,000 people to this city in the last 10 years. We're at our like all time high, and we have 20 years of projected growth in front of our city. We, we're, we're at the place right now where, you know, where our roads are concerned, for example. Like, I can't tell you where on University Avenue 
um, I would add a couple of lanes to add 60,000 more single occupancy vehicles, right? So it's not about thinking more of just more of the same type of thinking that's got us to this place. It's about figuring out where housing is concerned, where public safety is concerned, where economic development is concerned, where everything is concerned. It's about figuring out how to fundamentally take a just new approach at some of the old problems because we're just gonna face them in, in completely different ways in the coming generation. So what you just said is yeah. identifying markets that aren't there yet, right? Yep. And having that type of vision, that's the exact ethic that we're gonna have to have in our community to, to be able to kind of build that forward. Now, I, my kids joke, it was a dad, the dad commercial where the kid is like, you know, where the dad is like, I, I don't need a new phone just because they made a new phone, right? So my kids tell me I need a new phone, right? <laughs> And I pull you this do. out, That's kind of <laughs> and, and I share that just to say, um, I'm not investing in technology for technology's sake. I'm investing in people who know how to take tools and leverage them to identify ways to creatively solve problems for people now and to creative, can creatively solve problems in the future. I believe in the people. I think it's exciting that we have, and here's the last thing I'll say, because I'm getting excited. Um, <laughs> before I got elected, here's the other reason like this is so, so important to me. Before I got elected, somebody told me, some of those folks who couldn't figure out why in the world we would win this election, somebody told me, like, your problem is you don't look mayoral. You don't look like a mayor, right? And they were actually right, because if what looks like a mayor is defined by the wall in City Hall that shows all the photographs of our former mayors, I don't look like a mayor. We have fundamentally changed what a mayor looks like in our community, and my hope is that our children in our rec centers and our schools and our neighborhoods think differently about what their prospects could be because of it. Um, in this room, this fundamentally changes what a founder looks like in our community, what an innovator looks like in our community, what a business leader looks like in our community. This room fundamentally changes that for our community forever in a way that it can never change back, and that's what I'm invested into. That's awesome. It's, it's how do you reframe in order to get what tomorrow will look like mm -hmm. by that and doing it in today. How about you and, and thinking about that? Yeah, I mean, you said it so well, but I would say the other thing is technology is in every single vertical now. I yes. mean, basically you have to be a technology company, that's right? And it doesn't mean that you like automating jobs. I know there's a lot of negativity out there about automating jobs, but, and, and drop jobs away or technology's bad or it's doing this. Technology can be used in such a good, impactful way. And in every industry from government to healthcare, education, there's so many interesting problems to solve, and that's how I kind of look at the way you were talking about, like, let's let's tackle the hardest problems and make impact. So when we invest, we actually think about impact in every investment, and we internally actually create an impact score that we all score. And that's a criteria for us. Like, it's not just about returns. Like, it's about the person whose life are we changing, it's about the families that we're changing, it's about the impact. we've. The stat that we kept track of since our beginning, we've, we've, uh, the companies we funded have created 23,000 jobs. That matters to us. There's industries that have been created. You know, you could call it trite, but like, you know, Fitbit, like we funded it in 2008, it actually allowed people to get healthier and better, right? We were, we're funding companies that are potentially curing cancer. So it's like there's an entire spectrum and impact can be sort of viewed in different ways, but there has to be impact. And so we care about that a ton. And so we look at it, there's sort of mercenary investors and there's missionary investors. We want to be missionary investors, so technology for good. And we may not get it right every single time. We have 150 or so active companies. We've probably invested in 300 or so. So something's going to screw up along the way. And we have screwed up a couple times. We've actually given money back because we're like, that's just not part of our ethos. Like, you went in a different direction. We're not going we're not going to support that anymore. But we want to find impact, and it's in every, and it's in every vertical. It really is. No, that makes sense. And especially as we think about it from a Minnesota standpoint, we have been able to be successful because we have such a diverse economy and been able to go to the next level in manufacturing like because of advanced right. manufacturing, in healthcare, because of med tech and things like that. And so I am trying to remember how it goes. Like in order to innovate the, the, ca the candle, they didn't just you know make it hotter. They just decided to actually do a light bulb. And so you got to think differently and reframe in order to still get the same outcome, they want it light. And so how do you make sure that you're thinking about that? And that's so exactly right. that's something that's very important. Um, 
So I, I really want to just go deeper with respect to, I appreciate it, you said we weren't um, looking at a board and saying we're going after Minnesota, we found Clarence. Yeah. So now you're here. And so I'm just very interested in understanding why it's important to you all to invest in diverse, to invest in diverse founders. Oh, I mean, it's, it's sort of a no-brainer in the sense, I mean, if you look at even the data, you know, diverse founders, diverse boardrooms, diverse teams actually perform better. So just from a pure bottom line analysis, you just need different opinions in the room, for sure. I mean, I think it makes everybody better. And I think, you know, we've been super intentional, but we had a lot of work to do to even get better. But, you know, we've started grassroots programs, like our own internship programs, all about diversity, bringing diverse people to the Valley to help them actually grow and build inside of that. We've done it internally through our own hiring, we've done it through our own investments. It's made us better, it's made our returns better, and it's just brought so much interesting and unique thought that we can solve problems better. So it is absolutely top of mind for us and critically, critically important. In fact, if we, I mean, to put it another way, if, if we don't do it, I don't think we succeed, actually. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's an imperative, right? Because it's so critical for solving, solving the problems of tomorrow that are super hard. How about you, Mayor? Why is it important to invest in diverse founders? Because the world is diverse. Oh. And our customer base is diverse. <laughs> and our uh, human resources are diverse. And you know, if I, I assume that everybody in here who's launching a concept or launching a company uh, wants to be able to sell to some of everybody, is that right? Yeah. And so, you know, in 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 like I said, I go back to my campaign. If I if I want votes in our African American community, I, I have to listen to what folks are saying. I have to have people in the in the idea room uh, who are helping to create solutions that will impact that people will look at and say, "Oh, hey, look, that impacts my life." The same is true about running a community. The same is true about running a city. The great thing I'll tell you about St. Paul is you're trying to figure out where to plant your business. Um, <laughs> because I, I got a pitch too, <laughs> is, you know, as I say, this ain't the community we were 50 years ago, right? Those people don't guess that St. Paul is a majority of people of color community. Those people don't guess that St. Paul has uh, more colleges per capita than almost any other school, any other city, that we have more linear footage of, 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 of river than any other American city. They don't guess that we have children in our public schools who speak over 100 different languages at home. They don't guess that we have that full ecosystem, Shantae, that you were talking about, that economic ecosystem ranging from companies like Upsea, St. Paul, a good St. Paul Company, obviously. Um, He's practicing that. That's right. I've been I've been doing it in the bath in the shower for a long time. St. Paul Company, obviously. And then they um, say like Ecolab. To like Ecolab. <laughs> that's exactly right. To like Ecolab, and that's the important ecosystem, right? That that all of those kind of companies can exist in that space together in a way that's uh, meaningful and important. So I say that to say that if you want to sell to the world. Uh, then you ought to make sure that the world gets a chance to participate, that the kind of communities that you want to get a chance to engage, get a chance to participate in the idea, uh, in the ideation process, in the creation process. And all I'm just saying is, if you're trying to figure out where to launch your business, St. Paul is a really, really good place to do all of that. <laughs> Mic drop. Invest in St. Paul. You, you said something. Because we're invested in you. <laughs> I like that. I'm, I, I'm gonna just, I want to just ask you guys one more question before I open it up to the, yeah. to the audience. Um, as you think about um, investing in the startup community from a standpoint of creating community, what are the what are the things that you need you think are needed in order to sustain those communities as you think about the barriers that um, the startup communities face what are those things that are needed and what are what are you focused on to make sure exists with respect to tools resources access um and so you mean like community among our founders for example yes you, you name your community. Yeah, so 
that's been a huge emphasis for us. So we didn't realize how powerful that was going to be. So we're six funds in, but our second or third fund, we're like, something's happening here. Like founders are talking to each other. And so we double down on that. We probably invest a million or $2 million of our own capital into that every year just to build community. But I think the biggest factor that makes our community amazing and continue to be powerful, and Clarence can talk to it too, is that it's safe. It's a safe community, uh, meaning you could be in our community, and we have multiple tools. You know, people talk through email, they have events, but it's super raw and personal and off the record because entrepreneurship is honestly because Clarence is because Clarence it was raw before Clarence got there. <laughs> now it's like next level, a lot, a lot of crying, a lot of. Yeah. <laughs> Came to our founder camp. Everybody's in tears. Everybody. Yo, 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 baby. Clarence is here. Um, but it's super raw, you know, because entrepreneurship is brutally hard. To just be honest, like I mean, we always say it's never a straight line. There's ups and downs and sideways, and it's how you act in these moments that are super tough that like really define you as people, us as investors, the entrepreneurs, the community, everybody. But the community is there to help each other. And the reason it works is because people feel very comfortable. They're not afraid to talk about how hard it is or how vulnerable they are or how you know the mistake they made and not feel like, oh, their investor's gonna like fire them because they're talking about it. We like to say, talk about it. Like mental health is a big issue. Like, we had a huge thread in one of our internal community um, email threads about somebody just, an entrepreneur wrote, this woman entrepreneur, she says, I'm having trouble sleeping, anybody else? And it like literally sparked this intense conversation because nobody was sleeping <laughs> in the entrepreneurial world. They're like, I can't sleep, I don't know why, like I'm going through this, I'm going through that. So these are real raw, and that's what I think brings community together when you can share experiences regardless of what you look like, and be safe and comfortable, and that's what we strive to do. And so we lead with, as a firm, we feel like we need to lead with emotional intelligence. Like EQ is missing from our industry, to be honest. It's a lot of IQ, everybody's got IQ, but it's about the EQ, it's about the whole person. It's not just thinking about them, a person as a business leader, but as an entire, as a full individual, and how do we support that? And that's where our community comes, is very, very powerful for support. But the, it's, it's like the crown jewel of truth. It really is. I, went, I don't say that that often, but it's it's the core of what we you do. See what he, you see what he did there? True, yeah. yeah I, I, can, I can talk about true sometimes, yeah. too. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, I mean, you know, this we're all a product of our community. We're all a product of the things that we learn, the experience that we've had, and the people who are around us all day, every day. I'll tell you, I, I have a group of mayors around the country that we're kind of constantly on the tech and people we're, out, we're in competition for grants or we're in competition for this or whatever it is uh, and we're constantly kind of checking ideas off of each other uh, and you know in a way that kind of behind the scenes it's this kind of camaraderie that you wouldn't necessarily know because one of the things that's true I know about many of your life uh, I think I saw a clearance post on Facebook one day, something about, you know, everybody wants to be a founder, but nobody wants to do this. You know, nobody wants to do this work, you know. I sometimes joke, everybody wants to be a leader, but nobody wants to lead. And it's all in the same way, right? Because these lives can be uh, lonely, these lives can be isolating, and the way you maintain success, this is a conversation I'm having with my daughters right now, right? LeBron James is LeBron James because when other people are happy with themselves, he's disgusted with himself, right? Uh, he's like, that's not good enough, right? At a level of performance that other people would be thrilled with, uh, he's unhappy with it, right? And he's, he, he wants more and he's pushing himself to, to kind of do even more. That's you. Uh, I know that's clearance. Uh, that's the way I approach my work. It's the way, it, it, that's the pathway to, to, to doing something amazing, doing something awesome and kind of breaking out of the box. But it, it can also be a very uh, lonesome, isolating, unhealthy uh, way to live. And so having that community around you is absolutely critical, which is what we're trying to do here through. So I don't know if you're familiar with our Full Stack Initiative here in St. Paul. Mary Rick's in the back uh, with St. Paul's Full Stack Initiative. And our goal is to make sure that we have like this community, uh, this ecosystem of, uh, of innovation in our city where there are, you know, the workforce and the, 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 the companies and the jobs and the events just kind of in a constant churn with each other. I know Sharon Kennedy Vickers is here somewhere as well. Uh, she, oh, she's back there by Mary, uh, who's our chief uh, uh, CIO for the city as well. And we're kind of trying to keep this kind of constant churn because we know that maintaining that healthy, uh, sustainable path 
towards kind of launching these amazing innovative ideas, these amazing innovative companies, just requires the type of energy, the type of community that we bring. And there's so many of those businesses, I, as I look around this space, there's so many of those businesses that bring that. And especially when you're kind of breaking out of that mold of like what a founder looks like, right? Um, because if somebody saw, if somebody posted a, a picture on uh, Facebook or on Instagram, whatever, about this room, there'd be a whole lot of guesses of who, of, of what this is a room full of. Um, and founders might not be the first thing on the tip of everybody's tongue when they see that, right? But when you're breaking the, those molds like that, you especially need community. And that's why I think this type of gathering space is important. That's why you honoring the space with your presence is important. And that's why it's important to us in St. Paul to kind of continue to create that type of space uh, so that we can know that those ideas, those innovations, that are, those uh, the kind of uh, uh, companies that, that, again, so many of you in this room are, are, are launching right now are, are welcome, you're supported, uh, and we're excited that you're here. Awesome. Hashtag strive for greatness. LeBron James. No, LeBron. No. Um, as, we think about, <laughs> as we think about the year we're in, in 2020, and, and you see all the hashtags, you know, your vision and make it plain, and as you think about your grand vision, and you're able to accomplish it, what is one word that you'll walk out with? I said one. That I'll walk out of this space with? If you're able to accomplish your grand vision, your grand vision, whatever that is, pieces of the work that you're doing, or when you walk out of the mayor's office after your second term, <laughs> what's your grand vision? Um. Can I explain one? No, word? I said one word. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I had to call him Melvin, like when his mom. Melvin? <laughs> Not mayor. One word. Pivot point. It's a hyphenated one. Like, and I said it fast, so the two points. Pivot point. Next. <laughs> I have to do okay. one word. One, one, um. <laughs> Yo, no, it's not. <laughs> Relationships. Okay. Can you guys give our wonderful speaker? <laughs> They have a booking app if you want to book the space. Um, but again, no, we don't. Uh, don't do that to us. Uh, okay. Well, Civic you will be booking the space all the time, so you won't even have time. So. Deal. But thank you. So can we give Shantara a round of applause? freaking book in the app, so don't book <laughs> we, we don't. And, uh, no, but like, like I said earlier, we literally built this space with the thought that we wanted the community to have a place to come and have a high level event with high level mics and high level surround sound and all these great things where, you know, I, I, my, my friend Alex is here tonight and I, I remember the first time they had a gravity event and we were in a building and some of the chairs didn't work and they were dirty and like, I remember telling him after that event, I was like, man, I'm about to say something really vulgar, man, so I apologize for what I said. I was like, man, fuck this, man. I was like, why should we... Is that your one word? <laughs> I, I said it really bad, like, fuck this. Um, um, I, I remember walking out that night and saying, you know what, man, if I ever have the opportunity, if we're ever so blessed, to be able to create something that is in our own light. Like, we're going to do it at a level where everybody in town wanna to come to this space to host an event. So, tonight you see the spotlights, and I know that's not very startup it's not very humble, but fuck that. <laughs> right? 
Like everything we do here is about doing it high level. It's the way our team works every day. It's, it's what our investors expect of us every day. That is even what my wife expects of me every day. It's like go hard every single day and be the best you can be. And I am no longer going to take a, a seat, a, a, a step back, and, and sit in the back seat and feel like, well, you know what? We, we like, like we're good at this, so we want to, we want to be Minnesota modest. Right, uh, I don't want to be Minnesota modest. That's right. I wanted to build a space where people could come and feel their greatness. And it was and and that's what we try to accomplish here. But we're not stopping here. You know, there's, uh, some of you walked in and you saw the other space, and the first question I got was, "Well, who has the other space?" And I already put in the atmosphere. It's up to you. We're coming. We're going to take the other side, too, because we think that we can build a really big company right here in St. Paul. That's so, right. Uh, That's right. So, um, thank you all for coming tonight. Um, I, I am so indebted um, to each and every one of you because so many of you, of you in this room have been a part of this journey. And whether it's through your money, we appreciate that, believe me. Um, whether it's through your, you know, 11 o'clock phone call that night, like, hey man, like, I see you struggling, I believe in you. Um, whether it's, you know, those who, you know, send us messages on social, like, hey, like, we support Upsy, like, we see it all, like, we're thankful for it all. You know, obviously we're thankful for, you know, these folks up here to, to, to support us in what we do. But, you know, none of this happening happens without, you know, all of you in this crowd. So we really appreciate you coming out tonight. You know, before you leave, take some food because we bought too much. Um, take a plate home. Um, you know, find somebody that you don't know tonight and give them a hug. You know, tell them thank you for being here tonight because, like, we're literally here to build a great community in St. Paul. I think I told the mayor when we when we talked about coming here. I said we're literally going to go to the streets and take those kids off the streets and bring them here. Um, and that's our goal, and that's what we're going to do. So again, thank you all. I really appreciate you you you, you coming here. Um, travel safe home, and we'll see you at the next up to the event.